Yes. So basically, um, some time ago, um, actually on Friday, um, there was a little discussion whether um, locusts have to be inevitably slow. And my opinion is that they don't have to be inevitably slow. And we'll see about that now. So um, a few months ago, there was a discussion on Complank 4, uh, where the question, how do we code free tube uh, with simpler words in fourth? And one of the solutions was this one, uh, which basically puts the free uh, values, the free cells in, in locus, and then um, from the locus back on the data stack. Um, and um, when we look at how um, big the code from uh, various systems is, we see, well, some systems uh, take a lot of instructions and a lot of bytes to do it, and others uh, take fewer. And one sticks out, which is LXF by uh, Peter Feld. Um, and uh, he's Swedish, so I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, so anyway, he, he does it in seven instructions and they are shown here. And essentially, um, given the calling conventions that he is following, this is the minimal amount. Um, <clears throat> and the question is, how does he do it? And it's essentially the same thing that, for example, VFX um, does to, um, to be uh, to get so, such good code as it does, except that VFX limits itself to the data stack and um, LXF does it to both the data stack and the return stack. And it um, um, uh, it keeps the locals on the return stack so locals get optimized automatically. Um, yeah, so uh, does it always work that well? Well, let's see on the next slide. Um, I've looked at um, Nick Nelson's example about better values. And basically, um, this is the, the code that's uh, the, the part of the code of VI check that's um, that's actually being executed. We have the else branch that I um, deleted in uh, in my experiments um, because first of all, it's uh, it uses some non-standard words and it uh, is also um, um, it it would also um, put in um, uh, expand the code with stuff that's not being executed in the normal case. Um, and uh, here we have another version, the VI check S, which uh, uses um, data stack words instead of uh, using the locus. So here, here I use over instead of P, P index and to pick instead of um, instead of um, uh, p error and um, uh, in the if branch we uh, don't need to do anything because everything is on the stack already um, and how does yeah. that work um, we it's um, basically here uh, even lxf doesn't work that well for locus um, and the stack version is much better and vfx uh, is even better for the stack version and a little bit worse for the um, lxf version uh, for the for the locus version and why is that if we look at this again uh, what i've told you um, lxf puts the locals on the return stack. And basically that's what's happening here. So, um, and normally, um, so norm it's, it's analytically about it. So it, it keeps it on the, it, it just remembers, okay, this uh, return stack item is in, in this memory location. And this return stack item is in this register and so on. Uh, and the problem is, uh, at some point, it has to um, to actually materialize this. And um, VFX does it at, at basic block boundaries, so at if. And, um, and LXF is a little worse at that. So um, I think it already does a part of it when, when it uh, compiles the fetch. But 
I'm not sure about it. And, and some, some more of it when it compiles the within. Uh, and so essentially at that point we have to copy over um, the, the data from the, from the memory locations where it's on the data stack and store it in, in the memory locations where it's on the return stack. And um, in this um, here we then have to to uh, take it again from the um, from the memory locations that represent the return stack and put it back on the data stack, and that's why it's slow, um, uh, not not as good as um, as the um, as, as the stack version. So, <clears throat> in conclusion, are, are locals inevitably slow? No, they are not. Um, maybe. What I wanted to say before also about this. So I think fourth systems can be improved to actually also work across um, these basic block boundaries. And that's what we should be looking at in the future. So anyway, locals are, are not inevitably slow. Um, and we can look at C compilers that have been register allocating locals for decades. And it's also not just a, a matter of how many registers we have because they have been register allocating locals even on architectures with only eight registers. So um, we can do it also with few registers. And actually, uh, if you look at the LXF example, that um, LXF is a 32-bit system, so it also still uses only eight registers. Um, there are typical two counter arguments um, against doing anything with locals. Basically, one says that locals are against the four spirit, and people like to point to something by, uh, from Chuck Moore when, when they say this. Um, and well, of course, if you don't want to use locals, don't use locals. Um, but um, uh, the question is, if um, it's, I mean, that's not a good, I mean, that's not a good reason to, um, to not um, compile uh, code that uses locals into uh, efficient, uh, in, in, into efficient um, native code. Um, and um, uh, maybe a, a more commercial consideration, or not just commercial, actually, I mean, we all have only have so much time. Uh, another reason not to optimize locals is because they are not used uh, frequently enough to justify optimizing them. And um, I mean, there's something to that. Uh, and, uh, but I think there's also a vicious circle to it. So basically, um, um, Nick Nelson said, well, he, he originally wrote it in uh, with locals, but then he found it's too slow. So he uh, changed it to not using locals. And um, then as a result, when you take a look and see how much uh, optimizing locals buys you, you see it doesn't buy you much because um, the, all the, the code that's uh, executed frequently is not using locals because local implementation Locals implementations are so slow. So if we had efficient locals, uh, Nick, uh, we would have saved Nick the time to rewrite it uh, to use the stack. So thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Anton. Um, so do we have any questions for Anton? Stephen, please go ahead. This is more of a comment than a question, but the locals if inevitably require a degree of initialization and setup. And it's that setup code which, in the spirit of fourth of keeping the definitions short, there's, there's a major overhead that you're not going to get rid of. Um, that's, I mean, please show me where the setup code is in, in this LXF code. No, I'm not arguing against LXF. I'm sorry. No, it's not so, about, you are, you are arguing that there's something inevitable and I don't see it. Oh, um, I see. I see what you mean. Okay. I mean, you have to, you have to go basically, um, 
Peter has put in enough effort to optimize the return stack to the same degree as the data stack. And that's quite a big job. And I admire him for it. I mean, but um, my clients are not asked. Speed is actually relatively low on the list of client requirements. Uh, new facilities outweigh an, an additional 10% in performance by a, a large margin. Uh, Nick, you want to comment on that? Please go ahead. But please unmute yourself first. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the, the example that we showed there is uh, not a typical place where you would naturally use locals anyway. Um, the real advantage of locals is in code readability in larger and more complex definitions. And that's where we extensively use it. And frequently, um, those um, definitions require um, not just local individual values, but um, local pads or something like that as well, um, which obviously couldn't be done in registers anyway. Um, now, when you've got a larger and more, complica more complex definition than that, then the overhead of initializing and discarding the stack frame at the beginning and end of the word is a relatively small percentage of the total definition in terms of bytes and execution time. So in that case, you know, locals, locals uh, optimized or not, um, are, are really, really valuable in that case, necessary, I would say, for readability. Uh, Krishna, please go ahead. You are still muted, so please unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the one area where, or the one situation where locals really can help you is when you have a lot of parameters you need to, to um, send to a word, and you need the word to be reentrant. So in that particular case, you can put a lot of parameters on the stack, but then you have to do too much stack manipulation. You'd be tempted to use variables or other uh, data storage, intermediate data storage locations. And then you don't, your code no longer becomes re-entrant. So um, that seems to me the place to argue that, you know, where you should use locals. If you have two or three parameters on a stack, it seems hard to justify locals unless it really improves the readability of the code in some way. Okay, I would like to add to this for some for some of the people who are not here, which are the beginners. I can certainly remember I spent way too much time learning uh, the stack manipulation. And now that I'm profound with it, I don't think it's needed to I think you can write force with only locals and you can't hit me for saying that because we are virtual, haha, so I can't repeat this next week, <laughs> uh, next year. But I'm just trying to say um, uh, locals, you know, um, once you are writing enough force, you don't think about the stack anymore. I remember Bian telling me this when I was a beginner. OK, but as a beginner, it is uh, something which might put you off force because you just say, no, that's too complicated. I don't want to use that. So. I think it's 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 good that we have a discussion on also to have performant locals so that when people want to use them, so f swap for a beginner is easier to write with locals. I would argue if you would have to ask him to implement it with other or, you know, all of these things. But yeah. 